Nancy Drew is on vacation at Block Island, Rhode Island, with her rarely seen housekeeper, Hannah Gruen. Is this the first Hannah Gruen book of the series? It's book 98, so it's about time Hannah did something. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Hannah quickly makes friends with an older quilter named Sarah. Nancy befriends a graduate student named Barb Somers. She's studying the endangered American burying beetle. Barb takes Nancy to the beetle habitat. Nancy feels so privileged to see a rare animal. Like she didn't just have a rare animal mystery in book 95. Continuity! As the cover shows, they find a dead body. That is two books in a row where the cover is the end of chapter one. The murder victim is Tom Haynes, one of Barb's old boyfriends. He was a troublemaker with a history of law-breaking. The case is assigned to the somewhat flirty Sergeant Jim Hathaway. He loves to discuss the case with Nancy. They both mention going out for coffee together a few times, but sadly, the investigation gets in the way. The victim is the nephew of Hannah's new friend, which ties Hannah into the mystery. Nancy teaches Hannah how to ride a moped, and they meet Congressman Walt Winchester. He and his son Scott are building a home on the island. The head of construction is the main suspect, DJ Divot. DJ was the victim's best friend. They got into a huge fight because they both wanted to date Barb. What can I say? Guys love bug girls. DJ's hammer was found at the crime scene. Barb begs Nancy to prove DJ's innocence. I'm guessing DJ stands for dumb jerk because he is super mean to Nancy. He repeatedly insults her whenever she says anything. He refuses to talk about the murder. DJ gets swept up into the ocean. He starts to sink when his boots fill with water. Nancy saves his life. He is very grateful, so he agrees to help her. Just kidding! He still hates Nancy after she stopped him from dying and refuses to help her prove his innocence. At this point, I would just give up and let the guy go to jail, since that's clearly what he wants. Nancy and Hannah go out to dinner. Their waitress is Barb's roommate, Angie Cassetti. When the Winchesters enter the restaurant, Angie panics and runs away. Barb says it's because Angie used to date Scott. So Angie and Barb dated the murder victim and both suspects. They might as well rename their apartment as the Murder Date Zone. DJ and Scott argue about the construction work. One of the workers purposely hits Nancy's moped with his motorcycle. Nancy figures he was paid handsomely to attack her, since he's willing to abandon the motorcycle to escape onto the mainland. The Winchesters have a fancy yacht. Nancy sees Angie leaving the yacht, at the same time, Scott goes on board. Nancy chats with Scott. He has a believable cover story for why he's not the killer. And he's very interested in Angie. Hannah's friend finds thousands of dollars in cash hidden in the victim's closet. DJ reveals the victim was blackmailing somebody. Probably Scott. DJ gets violent when ordering Nancy not to tell anyone about the blackmail. Nancy visits Angie. Her timing is perfect. She overhears Scott use the words husband and wife. That's their big secret. Scott and Angie were secretly married. Because his father, Walt, doesn't approve of Scott doing anything that could jeopardize his political empire. Scott throws a wedding party on the yacht. This includes a silly Sunday making contest. I'm surprisingly intrigued by the idea of olives on ice cream. The culprit pushes a sliding glass door on top of Nancy. She manages to dodge in time. Nancy finds one of the blackmail notes in Scott's possession. He says the note isn't for him, it's for his father. Congressman Walt is a corrupt politician who takes bribes and has no alibi for the murder. Hannah and Nancy find a briefcase full of bribe money. They also find one of the rare beetles on Walt's shoes which places him at the murder scene. Nancy calls the police twice to tell them she knows who the killer is, but she's far too impatient to wait for Jim to get back from his lunch break. She wants to catch the culprit now! So, as usual, 
Nancy rushes off into unnecessary danger. She goes to Walt and confronts him with all her evidence. He admits he's the culprit. He pulls out a gun. He takes Nancy and Hannah as hostages on his yacht. For some reason, Walt decides to kill Nancy but keep Hannah alive. He knocks Nancy overboard. She tricks him by doing a dead man's float for a few minutes. Then she swims to shore. Nancy and Jim disguise themselves as lobster fishermen so they can get close to the yacht. She halts the yacht with a lasso. Then she climbs on board and defeats Walt with her karate moves. Hannah is tied up and gagged below decks. Humorously, she asks Nancy why it took so long to rescue her. The end. Postbook follow-up? This book is decent, but the writing and motivations need some work. Nancy bounces around between the suspects and locations, and I never quite understood why she did things when she did them. It felt a little like when you play a Nancy Drew game, and the story comes to a grinding halt unless you go to one specific place at one specific time. This book probably would be an okay game, along the lines of danger on Deception Island, since Nancy keeps visiting the same four places on this island. The game would probably combine Barb and Angie into one character. Barb is important at the start, and she fades into the background when Angie comes into focus. Hannah's friend also fades into the background. I thought Hannah was fine. Honestly, you could switch her out with Aunt Eloise and the book would be the same. The book says Aunt Eloise was originally going to be the older female companion on this trip. I'm glad Hannah got a chance to do something instead. Overall, I'd recommend this book to fans of the series, but if you miss this one, it's not a huge loss. My guess is that the publishers were focused on the big book number 100, so they didn't feel the need to give this one an extra round of polish. I give Nancy Drew Files number 98, Island of Secrets, a 7 out of 10.